Holland Live in one minute. Welcome to Lynn Cullen Live at PGHCityPaper.com. Email your questions and comments to Lynn at PGHCityPaper.com. You know, so listening to that uh, limp, dull intro. Oh. Yeah? And, uh, <laughs> I, was and- say, I haven't even said anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> also, I object to limp. <laughs> I, I'm sure. It's limp when you thought I was definitely <laughs> directing <laughs> <Yeah. the radio. laughs> I didn't. I wasn't even looking. At it. Yeah, that's yeah. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, hi everybody. And yeah. I was just referring to the less than engaging. That's, that's the same music we've had for years. For five thousand years. Yeah. <clears throat> I happened to while trying to clean up the rubble that's in the back seat of my car yesterday, I came upon a, a CD. Yeah. And I put it in. Well, it's a show from one of my radio shows mm-hmm. from some time ago. <laughs> and the intro is so good. Yeah. Why can't we just steal that? Can we just steal that? Probably belongs to your station. That's why. The station have... doesn't exist anymore. Whoever bought the station. Oh, screw them. I mean, what like was it? What was the music? Like, was it an actual No, like, it's song? Superman. It's the Superman music. Um, da-da, 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 and here she comes. No, I don't know if it's that. What is it? It's Wonder know. Woman. It's something like that. Da, da, da. Oh no, I know what it is. It's a oh, lone, Wonder Woman. It's the Lone Ranger. William Tell Overture. Yeah, and then there's a you know there's a voice that comes in and has some copy about how and here she comes. But it's a lot more exciting. And then I my voice is inserted saying something like, "Don't you dare!" I mean. And then it, it's right. definitely, it right. sets the proper right. mood. Right. <clears throat> so maybe we should rip that off. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we could write you a song. Wasn't somebody going to well, do that for you? Yeah, Michael. Yeah. Cynics. Yeah, let's get on uh, it. He's been saying that for 10 years. Okay, so. Maybe I'll write you one. Here's the other thing. In it, I'm talking, so the show, I'm listening to this, and I'm talking about, and I can't think, what is this I'm talking about? how the Capitol is, was evacuated. I said something about, they pulled Nancy Pelosi out of her shoes. They this, they that, they blah, blah, blah. There are tourists running down the stairs. But no one thought to tell the president. And I thought, what is this? And then yeah. it turns out it was some, there were some planes detected heading for D.C. Mm-hmm. And there was, they believed a threat potential to the capital so the capital is immediately evacuated obviously a threat potentially to the white house how do they know where they're going yeah. so george w was the president mm-hmm. and he was apparently out riding his bike okay okay and the secret service never informed the president when all of this hullabaloo was going on elsewhere they didn't want to interrupt his bike rides i found this he took you know, his fitness pretty seriously did Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But meanwhile, his wife was back in the White House. Mm. And not only was his wife in the White House, she was showing Nancy Reagan around for the first time since Nancy had been there. And she and Nancy are, like, taken by the scruff of their neck and thrown into some bunker in the basement. George W., the president, is meanwhile (laughs) riding around, you know, who knows, the tidal basin. I don't know. Can you imagine if, like— if the entire um, government were wiped out and the only people left was George W. Was, well, no, was was his wife and Nancy Reagan? Like, what would, what would we do? I don't know. We'd say no to drugs, but beyond that, 
You know, I have to tell you, Ed is telling me he doesn't have sound. Oh, good. That's actually the best way to experience this show. I have been <laughs> saying for a long time, Ed. There's a note on the website. Carlo gave instructions, and I gave instructions. Yeah. Oh, is this uh Go to our website. Go to oh, our website, Ed, and follow the directions. <laughs> the problem is, unless Ed reads lips, <laughs> well, he is not I, able to take that very good advice. But I have suggested to... It could be like a HAL 9, you know. Like I have a, suggested to the audience that they do learn to read lips, yeah. since our sound goes off so often. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. There we go. Okay. Okay. So I just sucked so it up. So anyway, here's what was weird about. It. So I'm telling this story, yeah, and I'm yeah. vaguely remembering this yes, thing. Yes. Yes. And then all of a sudden, I start. I I go from this, and I'm saying, "Did you see the pictures of like little children? They were running on the steps of the Capitol building. Did you notice their shoes? Some had New Balance on. Some had blah blah blah." And seamlessly into a commercial for little shoes. Did which, you know? Yes, which okay. could save your life. So I start talking about if you want your child to survive the next terrorist attack on the Capitol while visiting, make sure you stop at Littles first. <laughs> And you get that. That's the and, kind of product placement I'm not sure I'd want. Well, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm doing all this stuff about terrorism yeah. and little in, in little spot, and I'm thinking, oh my god, as I'm listening to this, and I didn't hear a word from anybody. Radio on the you edge. Know, yeah. That was fun. I guess. Well, sure. It's a little. A little what? I mean, it's, you were you were you were pushing the envelope. It was good. Said. It was good. All right, I don't know. If we don't have sound, if you don't have sound, let me know. Otherwise, Ed, it's your effing problem. Yes. I've been thinking to turn over a new leaf before I enter my eighth decade. Goodness, okay. That would be when I hit 70, right? Yes, yeah. Okay, all right. Is um, that what you're pushing? You're remarkably well preserved. Well, <laughs> That's one of those things. Again, is that the kind of compliment you want? I don't know. No, I don't know. I, well, yeah, you I don't guess. look it's like fine. you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, an old four. Yeah, but anyway, listen. Huh. So I, I um, yeah, I sleep in a formaldehyde bath, <laughs> an hyperbaric chamber, like yeah, yeah like Michael said, Jackson. Exactly. And it worked out uh, great for him. Yeah, but my next, my next birthday with an O, uh, it, yeah, okay. uh, zero is a uh, is seventy. Okay. Yeah. 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 And I don't even have another one with a five. So, yeah, I'm, yeah, then it, okay. it's getting there. Yeah. Hard to imagine, isn't it? Anyway, I decided I have to stop saying fuck so much. Don't you think? I'm wondering if it really is starting to seem unseemly in a woman my age. Well, that's the best time to do it. I do think. you think? Yeah, you should be one of those, you know. Crazy grandma types who are always salty and. But I do swear more than most people I know. Oh, you do. It's true. I do. Yes. And I have told you where that came from. <laughs> um, you don't know I have Tourette's. 1960s, <laughs> your 1960s era defiance of all. No, of, uh, not really. All that's I, I, sacred and good no, in American life. No, I was oh. really not. It came from affirmative action. It did. It okay. was a direct result uh, of me being a token a woman in a woman hire in a yes, totally so all to male oh, right. environment. Oh, so once again, it's the white male's fault. Well, it was mm. because they were always trying to get me, rib me um, in some ways. So you can't believe if anyone did to a female employee what they did to me on a regular basis, yeah. the whole station would have been cleared out. I'd be the only one left standing. <laughs> But there was no sense of that being yes, inappropriate yeah, behavior. Yeah. So if you're reading the news and doing the news and some cameraman drops his trousers directly in your line of vision, that was not considered anything other than very funny. Yeah. I still I still think you need to write all this stuff down. I think it's fascinating. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. I well, do. you know, I'm working on a one woman show. Yes, I know. Oh, that's not that's writing it down. Yeah. yeah. That's what you've said. But I don't have time to tell all those stories. Okay, so that's why you write them into a book. You do the whole oh, thing. God, I I, can't people would be into that it. Long. You're like a case study of the, the, of, the, the, of the rise of and whip. fall. Uh, <laughs> of, of foul mouthed women. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I would read that book. Would I you? Would. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Just for the, what is it, the Lawrence Welk story? Or wait, am I getting my... Well, there's a Lawrence yeah, Welk yeah. story. I don't think that's one of the best. And if only no, wait, I, I could... must be thinking of the wrong person then. No, Who was Lawrence it who was like was... feeling Lawrence your thigh up? Okay, yeah. He wasn't the only one. Well, sure. <laughs> there was a guy, a very important congressman from California. Congressman, uh -oh. I want to say Tim Burton, but I know it's not Tim Burton. <laughs> <laughs> there was this family named Burton who yeah. was really powerful in the Democratic Party. They were big, like the head of the state legislature, California. They were right. huge. One of them was a congressman. And I interviewed him at a hotel in Madison. Mm -hmm. And we were sitting at a dining area, and there were white tablecloths over it, and I was... This is in the room itself? Or is no, this no, like no, a no. separate... No, no, no. It was in a okay. public room. Okay. Uh. And I'm here, and he's there, and we're like this. I'm Cameras in place? Yeah, cameras okay. yeah, yeah, in okay. place. Okay. Yeah, but... So while I'm, and so, uh, Congressman, I was wondering how you felt about the so-and-so bill currently before the, huh. well, Lynn, uh, blah, blah, blah. and his <laughs> hand is just up my skirt, and I'm like, I'm like pushing it down, but we're still doing the interview. Yeah, that's, no see, that's, one it's stops amazing. the interview. So, that's... Lynn, and I... Yes, thank you, Congressman. But I was really wondering, you know, as I'm doing a follow-up as he's like, nee, nee. I, and it never occurred to me to stop it. Yeah, yeah. To say, yeah. wait a minute, stop yeah. that, you know, stop that. Or yeah. I didn't because yeah. it was just what That's happened amazing. all the time. And you were like one of the last people I would think of putting up with that. You're no shrinking violet. Well, because it didn't occur to me that women... Yeah, it that's what I'm saying. Like it it's was women which is just suffered yeah. this shit. It's amazing. Let's see, that's why I actually get a little annoyed with women today, who whine and bitch and moan because he said, "Well, I just don't like the way he looks at me," and I thought that you know, and they feel harassed. I'm thinking, what? Yeah, but yeah, but what? But, I mean, somebody was probably but, back in your day telling you not to be so sensitive about all this stuff. That's how progress is made is people. Yeah, but then it can go around. to then it can get to the it point can. where it's absurd. <laughs> I recall Oberlin College. You yes, remember this? I do. I where do. they and I have a nephew there now. I, I forgot to ask him if he got like some little handbook yeah. about where his hands could go. Yes. At, right. at certain times on a date. Mm -hmm. But they actually had a, a handbook yeah. of every step of the way. I thought that was Antioch College. I oh, maybe it's Antioch. It's one of those. Yeah, where you would ask for be. at every excuse level Excuse of... me, excuse me. I know I now have your hand, my hand on your inner thigh. Yeah. What I would like to know is could I move it another inch yeah. north? Mm -hmm. And then you have to get permission. Yeah. Jesus. Tell you what, back when I was at the top of my game, I could have made that work. <laughs> oh, I bet you could. <laughs> Those days are long past for me. Yeah, but, but I, I mean, had a think full head of that, hair. And... <laughs> when was that? When it was a long. That? It was a long time ago, Lynn. That's all that needs to be said. All right. <laughs> well, you'll note I'm looking at a woman with a dolphin, and apparently this woman is she's on this BBC documentary because she too pleasured uh, dolphins. Yes. Okay, in this NASA experiment, and. NASA, your tax dollars yeah. underwrote this cross-species sexual dalliance. But the funniest thing is what the research was about in the first place. And I remember I said something about they, it was about teaching English to dolphins. <laughs> it was. <laughs> but I assume that meant so dolphins would understand English commands. Yeah. No. I just read in this review of the of the – it's – they actually were trying to teach dolphins to speak English. Yeah. Mm. So she not did, sure that's a good idea. Frankly. And the guys and the <laughs> dolphin that she was involved with, guess what his name was? Peter. <laughs> and and so I mean, she said, 
So now, Peter, say whatever. I mean, if you're trying to teach. She, she was stimulating him while trying to teach him? Well, I think she says she would stimulate him to get that out of the way, and then he ah. was more inclined to be taught. <laughs> <laughs> but they said, <laughs> apparently. Huh. Apparently. Like... <laughs> so this whole experiment was the um, was being overseen by some uh, scientist named Dr. John Lilly, <laughs> and Dr. Lilly sounds like I mean, sounds like he makes the scientist in Back to the Future look like uh, you know he's got yeah, his yeah. shit together. Yeah. Um, Dr. Lilly was not only overseeing this attempt to teach in- English to dolphins. Uh, or to speak English, but he also was regularly on LSD at the time. <laughs> and well, this, you don't want to watch that shit sober, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> he persu- spinning. He persuaded NASA to fund him because he said if a terrestrial species could learn human speech, that was then a clear implication implication that extraterrestrials could learn human speech. But don't, don't even they, ask. I don't know. The guy obviously yeah. insane. The only and so, poor, you know, and when they were found out, <laughs> Peter and the research woman. Yeah. Uh, they were separated. And, um, and 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 he was put in some horrible, horrible, oh. cramped, icky tank. Uh. And do you know what? They said he committed suicide. Oh, dear. That he was totally in love with her. Oh. He was totally in love with her. And he literally killed... How does a dolphin commit suicide? You know what? He simply refused to... to come up for air? To eat a- uh. anything. He literally shut down and wow. died. That's terrible. I was going to make a bunch this of jokes about... about- a- this is stimulating aliens, and now I just feel sad about it. Well, I know. Is that not the saddest love yeah. story you ever heard? Yeah. And there, are the, there they are, the Romeo and Juliet of that story. <laughs> I believe that is... <laughs> Wherefore art thou? <laughs> I believe that's his erect member. There. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse us. <laughs> Do you think your father would like us to go on to more serious uh, talk? I, I think my father tuned out after the first two and a half minutes. <laughs> if you didn't, Dad, bail out now. It's all downhill. Okay, Joseph writes, wow, thanks for the memory. I'd almost forgotten. I That was a fantastic intro from your past. Okay, let's rip it off. Oh, what? Oh, you're, you're gonna... just going to have to talk to the, you know, there's a I'm not talking rights. to anybody. It's probably a rights What? Thing. There's rights to the. Yeah. The station doesn't exist. Yeah, and even the if same. it did, they'd never know about it. Even if they knew about it. Come on. You know what? All through my career, I have regularly ripped off major <sighs> artists. I've never paid a penny. Yeah. Do you think talk shows, when they use, you know, like bits and pieces of mu- do you think that they oh, I don't know. I know we can't use you know, what? photos and images of various kinds we have to be very careful well just stuff. because you are scrupulous doesn't mean that those of us who till the fields of mucky talk radio uh, uh, you know are I don't think no you have to I don't know I'm just saying <sighs> you're lawyered up <laughs> I am on my own exactly. and yeah no lawyer get near can me. Can neither confirm nor deny. That yes, I know. And I hear that little. I don't recall. I hear that little it. fine print at the end of every show I do for you guys. And believe us, we, we had disavow nothing to do with this that crazy age. woman disavow, you just yeah, listened to. We have to nothing for the past to say. Hour. The people at City Paper, the employees, uh, and their extended families. Absolutely, do not agree with the thing that you just heard. I hear that. Yeah. yeah. You think I take offense? Right. Sounds like you do. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> All right. Now, if you're wondering why we're not talking about anything in particular, it's because, frankly, I don't think there's anything to talk about. I refuse. What? What? Iraq? Iraq? I'm not talking about that. Huh. It's quite clear what needs to be done. 
nothing. And it's quite clear <laughs> that those people who are trying to get us back in there are out of their effing minds and were when they got us in in the first place. No, the and people who are out of their minds are the people who are booking them on these shows. That's the part. No, that, but see, that's the media. Which is yeah, why, that's what you I'm know, saying. Like, like I, they, that's the part that I'm just like. Yeah. What? And now let's talk to uh, what, what's his name Wolfson or uh, let's let's talk Wolfowitz. to Wolfowitz. Yeah. And now let's talk to Paul Wolfowitz. Uh, who Paul? Look, why I, do you? Yeah, yeah. Who was in every way wrong about every aspect of what would happen in Iraq were we to go in? And also on the panel, Dick Cheney, Donald yeah. Rumsfeld, uh, they, what's his name Crystal. These friggin' fools. Uh, the the guy who was the. Um, UN ambassador Bolton. Yeah. Um, oh my God! But what's it? What, what like is the part I'd like to know? And I've never seen it because I've seen some people certainly complaining about it. But like, what is what is the deliberation? Like, what? Imagine these guys are all sitting around David Gregory and his producer and all that stuff. Like, what? What's that conversation? <gasps> Melody cannot Uh-oh. hear us today. Uh oh. And Melanie has her stuff together. Yeah, totally. She's tried to. She's tried the alternatives. Still can't hear you. I've tried the alternative. She's. We're gonna lose we need, our audience. We need to I get. I mean, why are people gonna? We need to get a sign. Will you? Well, will you go upstairs and tell these? It's the first I've heard of it. Well, I'm telling you now. <laughs> we have. Maybe it's no not the computer. Audience. Maybe no. Maybe no sound emanates from this studio. Once you're in there, because this is the first I've heard of it. I did not know you were having sound. Here's problems. somebody else, Tim. This is all my email is now. Where are you? I've tried on this. I've tried on that. I've tried on, we blamed it on Macs for a while. It's not Macs. It's Macs. It's PCs. It's Safari. It's Internet Explorer. It's everything you could imagine, is it not? We're just in here talking to ourselves. I just want you to know that right now. (laughs) You should ask the person who emailed about your Uh. intro. Well, just because one guy can hear me, that's what's weird oh, that's about a good this. Question, no, so, no, 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 no. So that's what's weird about this. Some people can hear, and then somebody who could hear yesterday yes. can't hear today, uh, or vice versa. It's like a rolling block. So or something, it's yeah. in out, uh, in out, and you cannot expect to maintain a program and or an audience when you ask them to every day. Jump through 500 hoops right. to hear you. I sympathize with your concerns. Do something! <laughs> <laughs> you do realize. <clears throat> what? I just, I only have control over my little. You are on good terms and know the people upstairs I, well, yes, who I run things. Yes. Would you please I will see what put I some do. muscle? I will see what I can well, do. Well, put some, you know. <laughs> Throw your weight around would probably be a more apt. <laughs> <laughs> this is so upsetting to me. What's the point of even doing the show? I don't know. Now you're getting me down. Well, I'm down. And For I'm the mad. Record, Lynn, and I'm sick of on. this picky unish bullshit. <clears throat> How about we take a break? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. We'll pull ourselves together. <laughs> <laughs> Email your questions and comments to Lynn at pghcitypaper.com or call Lynn at 412-316-3381. Lynn Cullen Live will return in a moment. Download the brand new CP Hats app and find out what's going on in Pittsburgh. It's a fun and free app that puts the most popular events at your fingertips. Text events to 77948 to download now and register to win tickets to Pittsburgh versus Arizona at PNC Park on July 2nd. The CP Haps app, brought to you by Pittsburgh City Paper. Check out my new time machine. Does it work? Hit the button. Hey, it's Napoleon. Oui. Check out the future. Hey, you have a nice house. Why don't I? You didn't save any money, buddy. If only there was a way I could go back in time and fix that. Yeah. Save something for the future. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. Now, it's back to Lynn Cullen Live at pghcitypaper.com. Well, since no one can hear us, I guess we should just say what it is we really feel. (laughs) I really feel that I've been through a lot in the last six weeks. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. And the last thing I need... (laughs) is to finally manage through my pain to come to work and
going to have this level of incompetence and inefficiency. Is it Juneteenth today? I think the thing about Juneteenth is I think it's different days in different states because they got... It's sometime in the June. Procl- yes, but I think it's and like when exactly, they got the proclamation. This like, is the people there. in Texas didn't know. Yeah. The slaves in yes. Texas didn't know they were free for two yes. years. Yeah, or something like that. Now, come on. Yeah, yeah. What the hell was that about? It's not. I, mean, I know news didn't travel at the speed of light. Yeah. But. Oh, here we go. Here's a call. Hello, caller. Hey, Lynn. It's Mike from D.C. Welcome back. Hi. Um, I'm really tempted to let you all think you're talking to yourselves and no one's listening because that's kind of fun. <laughs> um, but I can hear you in D.C. on a Mac. There you go. There. Okay. Well, fine. But the thing is, have you have you had any tra- have, have you listened uh, during the week at all before this? After the fact. Oh. So okay. Something's wrong though. Yeah. Okay. Well, and I also want to reassure you that nobody's going to steal, uh, nobody's going to charge you for using their song because you have to make money for somebody to come after you. <laughs> oh, no have a good day. It's just keep <laughs> on coming here today. <laughs> yes. I love that. You know, by the time this is over, I'm really going to be dispirited. <laughs> no, I wasn't was feeling funny. that upbeat when I got here. That was funny. I was quit when I got here. I'm twice and as quit And Jay can now. hear us. That's fan. Fine. And cri- more calls. Just people Every reassuring us that we can hear. Every damn show is about. Can you hear me? No, I can hear you. No, can I? Hello, caller. Hello. I, this is. I, I couldn't tell if you actually read my email where I said I noticed that it was seemed to be a certain ad that was blocking the sound. Mm-hmm. David Garibaldi. Yeah, I don't know. That was just my theory, because as soon as another ad came on, the sound was fine. In fact, when you guys first pop up, I could see the little sound thing, and then the ad comes up, and then it's gone, and when the ad is done, well, who is this? Who is this jerk, David Garibaldi? He teaches sign language. <laughs> somebody he teaches sign language. Maybe you used his sound on your show and didn't pay him. <laughs> <laughs> right. Actually, well, screw anyway. him! Okay, you that, have to go with that. <laughs> that was just my theory. Anyway. All right, Tim, I thank you All for right. that. Thank you. Thanks, um, okay. <laughs> Has that ad been the ad all week that pops up? I don't know if that was my ad when I looked. David Garibaldi. All right. But see, yes. what an interesting show this is, huh? Yeah. Let's talk about something else. Let's okay, pretend we're... this isn't happening. Let's rise above it. Here's our next email. Lynn, when I first brought you up through Internet Explorer, see, here we go, it didn't come up. I tried what? twice. What? Then I tried what? Google Chrome. Mm-mm, didn't work. But I am nothing if not persistent. Chris, I love you for that. But believe me, I myself would not go and jump through all these hoops to hear, I don't know, Pavarotti. But I am nothing. Okay, I tried again through Google, and it came up with audio and video. Loving the light show today. Keep it light because I was trying to bring up your show. I missed the first five minutes. Were you talking about writing a book based on your TV days? That would be a bestseller. Why does everybody keep trying to put me to work? Because. Well, I'm lazy. Hello. Hello, I almost didn't call because two other guys called right before me to say, oh, I could hear you. <laughs> well, thanks, man. You know, but, every, every episode should just start with 20 minutes of everyone checking in. That's what we do <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. Well, so, see, I, I, I haven't listened all week. This is the first day. Okay. And, you, and, and you got and, through. Yeah, and I got, you know, but I had to go to, you know, the live thing, and I'm on a Mac, you know. Um, but what was hilarious, you know, I knocked down the, 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 the first pop-up ad, and I had scroll down far enough to see that you weren't live and there's no sound but it was hilarious watching you guys talk with no sound <laughs> no i'm telling you that is really the best way to watch this show it's just to turn us down it's it's all of our personality but with none of our irritating opinions or thoughts yeah yeah it's, it's like a, it's almost like one of those things you want to um like just add you know voices yeah. and sound effects to yes yeah no. <laughs> Do that? What was that like? Bad sound, sign, re, uh, bad uh, lip reading, or whatever, wasn't that? Yeah, like an bad lip reading, yeah, or yeah. you know, you put an animal sound. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so Liv's going, rock, 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 rock. <laughs> and, and you're like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'd be like a three-toed sloth, whatever yeah. that sound like. <laughs> I am so glad that everybody is having such a <laughs> mirthful experience. Yeah, that's it. At my oh, here's something else I had to do though. What's that? On my on my uh, my desktop, I have you know I think it says PLS or something. 
that I usually just click on to listen to the live stream. Yeah, what'd you have to do? That didn't work. Yeah, so I had to do. I had to like redo it and replace it with the new one. There you go. And so, then, and then that worked for the live stream. All right. So you didn't seamlessly get on. And yeah. you know, next time they're going to tell you you have to stand on one foot, put your finger up your nose, yeah. and turn around. Uh, you know. Curiously, that's the only, that's the only way we can get WTAE at my house. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, what, what, what I wanted to do was I stuck my left foot in. Then I pulled my, my left foot out, out. and I did the hokey pokey hope- and turned myself around. You know, and that's what it's all about. Okay, well, then we got that settled. Clarence, as usual, Thanks for the God call, bless man. you. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Right. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Shit. So apparently Fox News brought in Terry Bradshaw to opine about uh, Benghazi. <laughs> Why not everybody else? They've asked everyone else at this point. I'd rather listen to, to Bradshaw than to, like... You know, Judge Napolitano or whoever the hell they got. So sitting what did old Terry with, have to sitting say? Sitting down with the hosts of Fox News, outnumbered uh-huh. on Wednesday. Yeah. The four-time Super Bowl champ was asked what he thought of Hillary Clinton. And he, oh, simple question, do you trust Hillary Clinton? And here is Terry Bradshaw's response. Um, not really. Don't particularly like her. Never have. And then... It said it was clear Bradshaw was choosing his words carefully. It's the first time, it's the yeah, first time for everything. everything. That's right. <laughs> I always say this. If you tell the truth, you just have to, you have, don't have to worry about covering up. The truth sets you free. Oh, jeez. Just tell the Ooh, truth. Let me get a pencil. I want to write and that And now down. you can hang it. You'll never forget it. And it becomes your foundation. If she's going to decide to run for president, she's going to have to answer the Benghazi deal. Well, Why ask this? Affable. Affable? Doofus. Affable doofus. <laughs> I once interviewed him while he was um, lying in bed, and he was he was half asleep. I mean, I, clearly the call, we woke him up, yeah. and it was like, all oh, right, yeah, Lynn, okay. And the whole call, it, he just, it, uh, it made me very uncomfortable, frankly. At least you weren't in the room with him, because it sounds like... <laughs> Somebody else might Some have been. Some kind of Dove Charney thing waiting oh, to happen there. Oh, man. Did you see, by the way, he got in? Who did? Dove Charney, the guy who runs American Apparel. Yeah. After like all I, these years of allegations about him. He like, finally got kicked yeah, his, out. His he board, was a sexual harasser, right? Uh, the allegation was that, yeah, he like... He he uh, he shot a lot of these photos, including some that I think have been on our back cover over the years, and uh, and he would like you know harass. Well, you know, women. I noticed he would what was on the back come cover. Come on to them, he would. Oh, of yeah. this current so, no, week, yeah. and it is it's it's. I mean, it's slightly. It's not porn. Yeah, no this this past week's is not even. Really... But it's it's women. In these, you know, like just about to go. If it goes just a little further, you're looking yeah. up there, there, you know what's. And I'm thinking, and this is American advertising, and this is, you know, it's just. And you wonder where the objectification of women comes from? <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah, what can you say? So, I what mean, chance do any of us have? Women, that is. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm, well, the guy did get fired, so look on the bright side. Fired with a golden parachute of a hundred million. I don't know. It's, they said for cause. I'm not really sure if if uh, look at be getting the look current. at all the rest of my emails. Yes, yes. Well, let's not talk about it. Let's just rise above it. You, I shouldn't share these tips no. from other well, I listeners. Mean, I don't know. Yeah, it seems no. like different things are working for different people. So. Yes, but so what's that mean? I don't know that it means anything. And you don't think we have no culpability? Look, you're, ta- you're talking to a guy. You're talking to a guy who, when he woke up this morning, had no water. Oh, I wanted to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah, there was. Some and so it was about... like. So it was like. What is it? So you go through your whole thing. Is it? You know, you rush downstairs to make sure there's not like some fountain shooting out of your. Basement. Did you have any water? Or just low yeah, like pressure? a little, very, little very low tri- pressure. I basically. Well, that's what you get for living in the suburbs. It was affected Beachview, it affected Dormont, it affected Mount all kinds Washington. of Yeah, it affected yes, a lot of that. places. So and anywhere what, what, in the South Hills. What it, that is, is it's Pan American water. Well, what went wrong? Uh, apparently, there was some like huge water main that serves the entire South Hills that, that went down. That went down. I, and, and this is my point is like, so then 
but they're also they've also been having labor dispute. They've also been having labor uh, dispute. So, you know so I thought this morning when I woke up this morning, I was like, is this like was this a complicated? Not that they sabotage it, but something goes wrong and they didn't have the workers they needed to fix it. That could be. I don't think. I mean, I'd be very much surprised if a union thought that that would be a smart way to to plead its case. So you know why I was really indisposed. I yeah. had my brother and sister here. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And they were sharing a bathroom down yeah. the hall. Yeah, yeah. I didn't let them in mine. See? So they were sharing the the old, old, old bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. And they started complaining that they didn't think the toilet was flushing properly. Yeah. To the point where they had worked themselves up into such a, a tizzy, lather, as it were. Yes. Lather. Mm-hmm. That uh, they c- made me call a plumber. And? $220 later. That's nothing. The plumber fished a toothbrush oh, out yeah. of the toilet. Yeah. Hey, look, this it was, was that interest. simple. Why does it cost two hundred twenty dollars to fish it? That's, know, I'm telling you, you got off easy. I did. Oh yeah, I've spent I've spent hundreds. I've spent hundreds. We have a we have a basement. You know the Pittsburgh uh, the Pittsburgh shitter, as it's sometimes called. We have one of those, and um, I use it from time to time, and it essentially backed up, and it was a real mess. And essentially, we have tree roots. That have ah yes, come tree through. roots. So there you go. All right, and, and to really fix happen. that would cost thousands. They yeah. have to jackhammer yeah. the basement. Yeah. So. Th- so you just don't use it. No, I mean we you, every you like a couple times a year we drop a uh, copper sulfate down there and it, it kills the tree roots. I don't like. To oh, do that, so but... you're killing trees. No, just the tree roots. Believe me, the trees themselves are thriving. That's the whole problem. Okay, um, Chuck. By the way, I will report this. Does say. That if you go to my Facebook page and look at what Jess posted there, that the iTunes method is functioning, at least for him today. Yeah. But you see, that's not what they want upstairs. But you I'm don't just care saying, what they want upstairs. I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think you've about made that this. abundantly clear. Okay. So <clears throat> now let's hate government. Sure. All right. And the stupid people who run governments, small and and large, uh, at in various jurisdictions. The latest victim, a young child named Spencer Collins. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of him? No. He's a little kid in Kansas. Sure he is. That's part of a problem. And he loves to read. He just loves to read. He's how old? He's, he's nine. Good for him. Okay. He says, it's kind of like I'm in a whole other world, and I like that. I like adventure because I'm in the adventure, and it's fun. Okay? He's so, in jail now. Yes. <laughs> Spencer is being – he's also a very sweet kid because Sounds he like loves it. to read so much that he set up a little – created a little, like – birdhousey looking thing. Mm-hmm. We've talked about this before. And with the help, I guess, maybe of his oh, mom or dad, he put out they like a little stuck library. A, a little lending yeah, library. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it said on it, take a book, leave a book. So when he finished a book, he put it in there. And um, he was sharing his books with the other children Uh-oh. in the neighborhood. Then the family went on a vacation. And when they came back, there was a scary looking letter from the city. What city? Leewood. Okay. It's probably a, yeah. a suburb or something. You are in code violation. God knows what else it's say. That for what? That edifice, the structure yeah. must be taken down immediately. Mm. Uh it his little house with the books in it was considered an accessory structure. The city bans buildings that aren't attached yep. to someone's home. Uh. So, I thought this was going to be something like he left out copies of like Tropic of Cancer or something <laughs> like a lot no. of Henry Miller books and it was like some sort of. <laughs> but this is the kind of thing, you know, yeah, yeah, that yeah. takes a little child with all that promise, with all that hope and turns him into Us. a conservative <laughs> oh. Republican. <laughs> a conservative oh. Republican. Oh, because he resents government, the heavy hand of government. Right. Yeah. Hmm. He's been taught a lesson right off the bat that these government regulators just exist to torture well-meaning people so what's going to happen like i don't know you know, you the know how the news works they just tell you about it let you worry about poor little spencer and the, what now is going to happen to him in the future and they don't tell you 
Mm. We could all march over to Leewood, Kansas, and uh, you know take up arms. I guess. All right. Somehow I feel we'd be outgunned. <laughs> Something tells me Spencer and his family don't have guns. <gasps> what are you saying? That you Do think people the people with... who own guns don't read? I don't think they, they read. They read the Second Amendment better than you, libtards. Oh, yeah, right. Well, I got to tell you this because I think they do not, if you really were able to do there was, a poll, that they do not read as much as non-gun well, owners. I, I can't speak to that, but there wasn't inter- – I think it was in the Post-Gazette today. Wasn't there an op-ed piece about – uh, number of gun stores. A guy looked at communities all across the country. There's that, more gun stores than per, libraries, libraries and museums, and museums, and museums. In, like, in all the states that you would expect. And then there were more libraries and museums in, than gun stores. And in all enlightened the, yeah. states. I wonder which Pens- one we turned Pennsylvania in. turned out to uh, more gun stores than... Well, I was going to say that. I'm not but I think, I think, But I think it was close. It was like all the mid-Atlantic states except for Pennsylvania have more libraries and museums than gun stores. And that sums us up, wouldn't you say? Guns and religion. Guns Somebody and religion. Somebody said something about that once. <laughs> Where does the phrase guns and roses come from? Is that Mother Jones? Oh, gosh. Have you heard guns know. and roses? I loved them in high school. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. The problem is if you Google it, you're going to have to get through 4,000 oh, axle rows. Oh, okay. Things. Then you, what's the word? We want to know the derivation yeah. of the phrase guns and roses. Yes. I think... It's Mother Jones, really? not the magazine, yeah. the woman, the bespectacled really? white hair. Yeah. That would give me an entirely different perspective on, on... high school. <laughs> well, that's what I'm thinking, but I can huh. always be wrong. It would surprise me. I'm so scared. If I were wrong? No, if, if that... If that were true. That oh, I'm sorry. Me. I thought you were yeah. saying it would surprise yeah. you if I were wrong. No, no. Okay, I'll tell you what. I did, that sounded vaguely threatening, didn't it? I, I'll tell you what, let's um, take a quick little break. Quick, because this program makes no money at all, and there's really no advertisers anymore. And we will be back Jesus shortly Christ. after a amalgamation of public service announcements and self-promotion. It's all coming out after now. This. <laughs> More is on the way with Lynn Cullen Live. minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy so keep them active and eating well every day get ideas get involved get going at letsmove.gov that's letsmove.gov a message from usda hhs and the ad council Pick up the Pittsburgh City Paper today. Still the number one source for weekend fun in the Berg. Go online now at pghcitypaper.com to vote in the 2014 Best of Pittsburgh Readers Poll and type in promo code CPJATIX for your chance to win Jason Aldean tickets. Vote now before it's too late. Pittsburgh City Paper available at over 1,700 locations throughout western Pennsylvania and on the web at pghcitypaper.com and on your smartphone at citypapermobile.com. Have a question or an opinion? Call Lynn Cullen at 412-316-3381 or email lynn at pghcitypaper.com. Now, more with Lynn Cullen Live. All we've done this show is complain. (laughs) I was like, and then I had problems with my toilet. It's just like, what is going on? What is going on? Let's get it together. What do you think talk, talk is? Talk is complaint. Well, not about our own personal blotty blah, is it? I never listen to that. It's bloody bloody blah. You know, just, you know, yeah. All right. So let's just rise above it. Okay. Okay, we will. I am asked by Chris if I heard the comments from the former governor of Montana, one Brian Schweitzer, who is a Democrat. Yes. Yes. And I don't know who he was talking to, but I thought they were hysterical. But then, of course, they're hysterical because they're totally politically incorrect. And I'm trying to think. And you're 12. (laughs) <laughs> and I have the maturity yes. of a 12-year-old. Okay, so the first thing he said was something about, he was talking about Diane Feinstein, and, you know, she's a big mucking, she, she's the chair of the uh, Senate uh, for, uh, Intelligence Intelligence Committee. Yes, the Democrat. Yeah. And he was saying how now she's all got, you know, she's all bent uh, about something that, 
well, that's an outrage. And I kind of, and he said something to the effect of, ah, oh, man, that's rich. I mean, uh, before she was like, you know, a woman standing under the la- lamppost on the corner with her skirt hitched up to her. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> And and then <laughs> she I, said, he, "Wait, he said she was a hooker." Yeah, he said, and then he said, after he sort of set up the hooker <laughs> metaphor, he said, "I suppose I maybe should come up with a better metaphor." But then he plowed right yeah. back <laughs> in the best Montana tradition. Yeah, yeah, and then you know how he said, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just a virgin," and this and that, you know, right? So he, was, oh, okay. So that's what he was doing. That's what he was saying. Oh, all okay. Of okay. I thought I understand it was what he's, funny. Okay. But, oh, I'm watching these guys on CNN, and they're all like, I can't imagine. Oh, my God. And right. here again, there's that over overreaction. Come, well, everybody just calm down. Then the other thing he said, this is the one that really blew my mind. It's about cancer. This is, cancer. The, one I, this is the one I heard, yeah. You know, he said essentially, hey, I got good gaydar, and I got to tell you, what's with these guys from the South? And I'm sure he's thinking Lindsey, Lindsey Graham, Graham yeah. Eric Han- He think He finds them effeminate. He says there's something just so – they have women's mannerisms and they – this and that. And why would oh. you want – and so he calls Eric Hanner gay and um, and I, that I don't know what that was about. I don't know. I don't know. So Brian Schweitzer, oh, he's in big trouble today because you know now everybody gangs up on him. I hope – here's my – dear Lord, hear my prayer. My prayer – is that Brian Schweitzer does not apologize to anyone. Mm. Do you think that prayer will get through? I mean, there's a part of me... No, answer, no. Um, There's a part of me that's like, ha ha, at least the shoe's on the other foot for once. Because it's just like, just the other day, who's that dipshit, that Eric Erickson guy who was like... He's a right wing... uh, Yeah, and he was just like something about... This is all of this is all this outrage is being generated by like men who sit down when they pee or something like that. It's just like this total like rah rah eat red meat. You liberals are wussy. You know what I mean? It's like how many countries do you have to invade? Um, but so there's a part of me that's just sort of like, well, at least it's it's our guy being the stake head for a change, right? But. Don't that lasts great. that lasts for about 1.2 seconds and then all I'm right just all like... right fine fine but you know what what I hate more than some of these you know faux pas verbal faux pas yeah. is the is the drum all right yes now everybody everybody assume your positions and then well <laughs> all hot and bothered and then the person always has to and I should have said maybe we any choice I just want somebody to say hey There's this, and especially with the internet and all this media, there's, yeah, sure. a, there, there's, it's just a constant mob forming, mobs in high states of dudgeon about something someone said, which, frankly, is funny. It's funny. I don't mean to spit on you. <laughs> Thank you. No, that's fine. <laughs> it's like a little piece of immortality. <laughs> Yeah, I here she wrote a book. <laughs> so, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I'm kind of to the to the extent that, <laughs> to the extent that I worry that I myself will one day be caught in one of these things. Well, I'm sure I yeah, will. I'm how, sure, how do you talk as much yeah, as I do? I mean, yes, I can't get through a week. In, yeah, without stepping in something. I could never, and I didn't apologize for much. I said, I always said, well, geez, you know, sorry, but when you talk off the top of your yeah, right. Had Say dumb things for 15 hours a day. Yeah, because yeah. uh, I had a three-hour yeah. talk show. Yeah. Well, you 15 hours a week, <laughs> stuff comes out that was not well yeah. said. Yeah. Um, but what he was doing is talking as he would in his with his you know with right. his buddies. And his friends. That's probably why he got elected to the right, governor a, of the state well, of Montana yeah. as a Democrat. That's he's, right, because he's, he's folksy. Certain, yeah. He's right there. He's at, Exactly, because how does a Democrat get elected in Montana? They do this kind of, you know, winky, naughty stuff, which, frankly, probably I, to thought, ride a steer I thought or something both too. were funny. He wasn't calling 
Feinstein a whore. Yeah. He wasn't. I don't get, I don't get the was. I don't get the cancer thing though. Like, is that funny just to say, like, I think he might be gay? Like, is that? No, that's nothing. Like, that's not even. No, that's, I I don't know where, that was the weird one. Yeah. But even so, he was acknowledging that he does find Cantor effeminate. So? So? Why is that even a thing to talk about? Oh, see, now we can't ever even mention it. No, I'm just saying. So somebody's what? What exactly is, like, what what exactly is the humor value of that? So now we can no more opine because we're so liberated. On someone's sexuality, but it's a it wasn't a it wasn't. First of all, he wasn't opining on sexuality, right? He was opining on mannerisms, and he was suggesting that there's something what about if let's say can I, I mean I've actually I don't think I've ever actually seen Cantor speak beyond sound clips, so I don't even know what he was talking about. Oh, yeah. And even if it did, it's like so so what? Like what is what's the? I mean, I guess I have to know the context of his remarks to even make sense of them. I, I guess it's just like so. What are you saying exactly? That Cantor is he was going for a laugh. But like, I don't know. I guess at it's Eric just... Cantor's expense, I have used Eric Cantor for laughs. Sure, I mean we all have. Well, yeah, so, I mean we all have. But oh, it's but, like... that, but that's now totally verboten. You cannot. I don't you know this... cannot use any sort of uh, now passe sexual. Um, I don't know. A a sexual I mean, first of all, stereotype. It, it doesn't sound. It doesn't sound funny to me. First of all, which is one. If you're if you're what not funny, funny, if it's not funny, and if it's no, if why? it also doesn't make any sense, but it then... was it was funny because you're not supposed to say things like that. That's what's funny. It's funny in the same way as yeah, I'm guess... always going like this. It's funny in that here's what I'm thinking, okay, right. and I'm not going right. to censor it. Isn't he a little effeminate? So what? It's an observation. It's an observation. Well, the, you can't have it both ways. On the one hand, you're saying that the reason it's funny is that you're not supposed to say it. And on the other hand, you're upset because people are saying you're not supposed to say it. If the very thing that makes it funny I'm is that saying, there's a kind of stigma attached no, to it. it's th- not just a stigma now. There's fear. There's thought police about. See, I really, there's, you can't say that. I don't like anybody telling anybody you can't say anything. I just don't like it. But and what everybody people, falls into line. Everybody. But I, why I, does your, but then, but then. But then why doesn't everybody else have the right to be offended by it and say that's ridiculous? Because most or that's of them, a stupid, again, are just assuming their positions and going through the, you know, what they have to do. Oh, tut, tut. Oh, tut, tut. Okay, but if he does, if he, if he traffics in really tired stereotypes that are, in the, that are, that are knee-jerk re- reflexes conditioned over decades, if not centuries, if not millennia, that's okay, that's funny. But if anybody has a response that's arguably also somewhat formulaic, like that's the problem. All right. Obviously, I don't have a leg to stand on. But, <laughs> I but screw you, Potter. <laughs> white flag. I surrender. Yeah. But I'm just saying I hate any time that everybody understands exactly what they can say and what they can't say. And they're not doing it because they really believe it. They're doing it out of fear. I don't like it. Whereas here's what I don't like. I don't like when people do that and and the the rationale for doing that is just because you can do it or to demonstrate that you can do it. If there was some sort of end goal sort of beyond just sort of like trying to because you're not really my feeling about that is you're not really belittling Eric Cantor, right? You're belittling no, you're belittling not. you're belittling gay people. And that's where I have a problem with it by sort of like tossing this around like it's an insult to say that somebody has an, a guy who has effeminate mannerisms or whatever the, the context was. Like, I, I don't – if it was just Eric Cantor, I mean, there's a – God knows Eric Cantor offers <laughs> plentiful opportunities for making him look stupid and, you know, everything that he is. Which but is you're just, just saying now sex, a person's so, sexuality so now you're going to take that of the, whole, of the okay. whole universe of right. things he gives you. Know you why? that one. Because it's easy. And yeah, because exactly. It, it's easy and because it's verboten. Anything okay. that's verboten becomes something that a certain personality's just got to go for. Okay, which like I get, but the, but you said it yourself, it's easy. And that's where uh, I like, that's the uh, thing is the only rationale is that it's you're not supposed to do it. So why are you doing it? It just seems like kind of a, an empty game to me. Okay. All right. I'm not fighting this much. Okay. Because I'm sure you're right. And yet somehow I don't feel satisfied by this victory. It's strange. Well, you know what? I once was having a big fight with this guy. 
and and I finally capitulated. I yeah. I, I said, yeah. "All right, you know, you're absolutely okay. You're absolutely right." And he went ballistic. And this was the phrase he used. Don't minimize what I'm saying by agreeing with me. <laughs> and yet there's truth in that, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, right, there is. <laughs> he was right. He got, the yeah. way I really totally pissed the guy off is saying, yeah, you're absolutely right. Now, did you yeah. mean it or were you just, or did you mean being no I don't, re- I don't remember that part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a lot invested in this argument. <laughs> but, I mean, that happened like 50 years ago, yeah. and I've never forgotten That's really that because it is true. You've it's probably so never it's... made that mistake since. <laughs> well, <laughs> but I have felt his – I felt that since when somebody says, oh, okay, yeah, all right, you know, whatever. And I think, I mean, dare you agree with me. Um, Ansel writes, uh, ah. sorry, I didn't hear the beginning, so if you cover this. No, we just covered – we covered <laughs> people's, um, you know – whining. <laughs> So we covered in the first part. Of the All show. right, we had a little. <laughs> we're going to have to have an intervention soon. Ansel writes, "I can't tell you how much Dick Cheney and his daughter are pissing me off this week." Yeah, well, hey, this week, <laughs> the gall, the let's <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> his op-ed piece in yeah. the Wall Street yeah. Journal, blaming Obama for the Iraq. <laughs> situation well, it's just my book yes it is Ansel. and yet well, but, did anybody expect him to do a mea culpa here you know no, what no, folks no, no. <laughs> so dick cheney the aptly named dick cheney right yeah. so what yeah i thought it was one of the funniest things oh, i've yeah. read in yeah. a long time yeah don't it's not worth getting you got to laugh at this. Yeah. You got to laugh. I mean, Megyn Kelly, I don't know if people saw this. Yeah, Megyn, Megyn Kelly, Kelly was taking him on. Fox News uh, woman. <laughs> Weren't you pretty um, much wrong at every turn? And he's like, yeah, I said, fundamentally disagree. Right, well, of, right, course of course you, you do. do. But the facts show <laughs> that there were no weapons of mass destruction. I mean, and that's on Fox News. Yeah. This is what I mean. It's just like, Fox. You expect it, right? That's what they do. That's their thing. That's their shtick. I, the ones that I'm just like is like ABC and NBC and CBS bringing these people on and treating them like they have something of value. What? To like say. Do you think ABC, CBS, and NBC? I think they're actually worse. They may be because they yeah. purport to still be news operators. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the, that's the part that astounds me. Like, is there no one in that room who just says, um, "Don't we look sort of like idiots by putting these guys yeah. on?" Like, does does nobody? Is there no? Yeah, I, I, like I like. Well, what's I, even the mecha- like, what's even the mechanism? Ro- yeah, for... They have Rolodexes, okay? But... They have Rolodexes under experts in Iraq. Me, 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 me. They have the same ones. They have to have someone here and someone there, and they just pull them out. But there's no context in like, and so and so is joining us, right? Who he, blew it? Who, who said <laughs> blah 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 blah? Right, and, and they they don't allow. For some, there's really no, and this is like I, this is to, this to me is like this is America, which is there's a certain point that you get in your career. There's a certain level that once you attain it, you're golden, and you and I are not <laughs> at that level, and we probably never will be. Where it's just like there's no way every, for you to fail. You it's just it's just you're set for life. You're set for life. You don't think I'm there yet? No, I don't know. I mean. I sort of... You're here with me now. <laughs> well, that's... What I'm talking about is falling upward, Lynn, and... <laughs> no. You belong to City Paper now. You're one of us. <laughs> one of us. One of... <laughs> I hate to inform you. <laughs> You're bigger than this taco stand. That I do not belong in any way, shape, or form. You don't belong to us. You belong... With us, <laughs> which is even worse. That's worse. <laughs> but that's it's just like where is like there's no. I didn't expect anybody in the Bush administration to go to jail. I just expected them to go away. <laughs> yeah. And it just seems like at oh, the very and on the very issue more than any one, other. The only one who had who went away was George W. Yes. 
on the, and, and this so on the, on this the very issue the one issue that more than any other has haunted this country where the mistakes were just so obvious that even tea partiers sometimes can recognize them and this is the issue they're getting called back on it boggles <laughs> the mind it really it just and it just it is bigger than these guys like i don't expect look, look i mean if, if there's one thing that we knew about i just, the Bush I just want to point out yeah. i just want to point out that not only is your decibel level going Sorry, up, but my your octave, my range your is, octave yes, is. Yeah, yes, I so, get that way sometimes. And if I were a woman doing that, they would call you Hysterical strident. Or shrill. Or shrill. shrill. Strident. No, good. I don't shrill. think they say stri- shrill. Shrill stri- is for women. Okay, and now you can, now that I've interrupted uh, your train of thought. No, that's thought, fine. Thank totally you, Lynn. <laughs> Thank you for bringing this to my attention, Lynn Cullen. Um, no, I mean, I just. <laughs> There he goes. I don't, again. I don't expect the you don't expect the Bush administration to like ever be self reflective. I mean, that's the one thing we knew about them from day one. They yes, don't, that's they right. Don't do they, so I didn't expect like t- like Cheney or any of these other guys. But what I did expect was like on a sort of cultural level, we as societies would say, "That's nice. Now shut up. Like just go away. You are not you right. are not the people." Right. And if there, it seems to me that if there's one thing we could kind of come together on as a society, it would be these guys have. No, no right to be consulted on anything. And the more they talk, the dumber we get. And yet they're just, so this is the thing that just baffles me about American society or whatever. Donald Trump never goes away. None of these guys, I mean, the guy's getting bankrupt. Don't say these. American society. It's American media. Yeah, fine, that's fine. I'll tell you, okay, that's fair. American media, there's just no, the thing that's supposed to hold people accountable, not only doesn't hold them accountable, it holds them up as, that's right. despite all of their screw-ups. That's right. As a matter of fact, the more you screw up, the more sort of notorious yes. you get, yeah. the higher your value. Yes. Yeah. 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 Did you see they're tearing down the Watergate garage, That the, the garage that uh, Deep Throat uh, no, met? I didn't, uh, in the hmm. didn't make the historic review. Yeah. Uh, commission. Kind of hard, though. No, I mean, it would be. Yeah. yeah, right. But they. Uh, mm. What's going in there instead? What are they putting there? Starbucks or something? I have no idea, but probably it's either a Starbucks or a bank or a drugstore. That seems to be the only thing that ever goes up anymore. No. Isn't that true? No. Yeah. Kind of. Sort or a think tank. It's D.C. after all. Okay. Hey, I said something earlier in the week, and I want you to, I'm, because you're the editor of Pittsburgh City Paper, I okay. want to put a bug in your ear. Okay. Everybody's going nuts about all the development going on, yes. like in the yeah. East End and yes. East Liberty yes, yes, yes. and all that kind of stuff. I have not seen anyone write a piece about how effing ugly all those buildings are. Which ones? Like the... the ones they're putting up! <laughs> Bakery Square ah, is yes. a friggin' nightmare, uh, mm-hmm. an aesthetic nightmare. Bakery Square 2 <laughs> is another nightmare. Someone said it actually... You you start wanting Reisenstein back, which looked like yeah, a, which also you know, was not a which was a frightening yes, building, yeah. looked like a e- Eastern Europe prison. Yeah. It did. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, everybody lauds Walnut Capital for all this development. Somebody needs to start the conversation to say to them, "Hey, guys, did it ever occur to you that it ain't just a building?" Yeah. No, see, you're not into this. No, I am into it. It's aesthetically appalling. We have just the guy to write that piece, too. You do? Mm-hmm. Okay. Get on it. Okay. Because there's no awesome. one that's going to disagree. And you needn't look Except at Except Walnut Capital. <laughs> well, yeah. on them. And I even know those guys. Hi. Hi, guys. You know me. Hi, Tom. I'm... Yeah. Todd doesn't care. Anyway, guess okay, what? Okay, I think we're done. We I are. know we're done. I hope you have a nice weekend, Lynn. <laughs> I'm stressed out. A little bit. Well, I, life is hard for me now, okay? You try getting dressed with one hand. Doing 5802 tonight, are you? Or no? Or 7604 is what we're doing. What's that? I don't know, because 5802 doesn't exist. Oh. What's the thing you do on Friday? It's, I believe, 48-something. Oh, whatever. I can't. No, uh, that show goes on, I believe, what's called in the business, Hi-8-Us, hiat us, which is an ugly word. We go on hiatus in the... Um... Oh, in the summer. Yeah. I'm doing a thing, 10.30 Saturday night. I know. I turned it down. Well, you could have been up there with me on the stage with me and Rick Seaback. Let me tell you where I'm going to be 10.30 Saturday night. 
you better. <laughs> so I'm going to start supplying some ideas in a second. Yes? No, I'll probably be by myself, which I prefer. Oh. And <laughs> it's been a rough show for me, I have to say. And I'm not going to have to be entertaining. Okay. And I'm going to, uh, yeah, I might not even be conscious, as a matter of fact. <laughs> me either. <laughs> yeah, that's true. 10.30 at the uh, Cabaret at Theater, Theater Square. Square. Me and uh, Rick Seaback and also Guy Costa of all oh, people. Oh, dear God in heaven. And let it be known that there was an attempt to get uh, some diversity on that white male panel. Yeah. In the That's form right. of uh, an angry Jewess. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Lynn Coven Live, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and archived at pghcitypaper.com. The opinions expressed on Lynn Coven Live are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the viewpoints of Pittsburgh City Paper, Steel City Media, and its advertisers.